Hey everyone. Well, as promised, I want to tell you a little bit more about Bundle Branch Block. So let's recall the ECG we were looking at last time, which was this one um, from a 10 year old male neutered Doberman Pinscher. And we have nine leads in the top three lines and a lead to rhythm strip along the bottom. And if you watch the last episode, what you'll recall is we have sort of two separate um, morphologies here that the section in the middle represents normal conducting sinus rhythm. And the sections on either end, we concluded represented a left bundle branch block. So still a supraventricular driven rhythm, um, but with uh, a conduction abnormality called left bundle branch block, explaining the wide and bizarre QRS complexes. So let's just sort of refresh our memory with what um, normal conduction um, proceeds like. And so recall that a depolarization coming from the SA node or, or anywhere in the atria and supraventricular region is gonna progress through the AV node, as we can see in my colorful little schematic here, through the AV node region, um, the bundle of Hiss, and then down both bundle branches, left and right simultaneously, um, those are made of our rapidly conducting Purkinje fibers. And then it's going to break out into the ventricular muscle of the two ventricles simultaneously. And that's what leads to our nice, narrow, normal looking QRS complex. And that's indeed what's going on in this guy in the middle. Well, what about um, the bundle branch block areas on either side where the QRS complex gets wide and bizarre? Well, what if we were to position a lesion in the left bundle branch? So the, the red star where it says lesion is, is my depiction of that. Well, what's gonna happen is that conduction is gonna proceed down the right bundle branch quickly and normally. And then in order for that myocardium that is normally served by the left bundle branch, um, in order for that myocardium to depolarize, um, depolarization is going to have to proceed in a slower cell-to-cell -cell fashion from the right ventricle over to the left, um, which is what's being depicted by those sort of red um, C-shaped arcs. So again, slow depolarization, cell-to-cell -cell from right to left. But notice what we've just described here. We have described on average depolarization proceeding from right to left that is sort of the, the dominant vector is right to left. Well, if you recall way back when, when we talked about mean electrical axis, we know because the left ventricle has more mass. Um, similarly, in, in the normal case, depolarization typically proceeds in terms of mean vector from right to left. So if the mean electrical axis of our wide and bizarre complexes looks the same as normal, and concordant with our normal sinus rhythm, that would fit with a left bundle branch block. So again, if MEA is normal pointing to the left and it is concordant with our, our normal sinus rhythm, which we have the luxury of seeing here, um, then we know that that could be a left bundle branch block. Well, let's look at potentially the opposite pattern. So here's an ECG, um, again, from a dog. Couple things I wanna point out about this. Um, similarly, nine lead on the top, top three lines. Top three lines are at 25 millimeters per second and the bottom line, which is a lead two rhythm strip is at 50. So that's why it's more stretched out. Um, the heart rate is somewhere around 150 beats per minute. And um, I'm noticing two really important things. Um, I have wide and bizarre looking QRS complexes, um, particularly, you know, I can look at any lead, but if I focus on lead two, those look wide and bizarre to me. But importantly, I have P waves in front of every single one of those at a consistent distance. There is again, AV association. And so I am not falling for the trap that this is a ventricular rhythm of any kind. It is still a super ventricular rhythm, albeit with a conduction abnormality. So I'm thinking bundle branch block. How do we figure out which it is? Well, again, I'm gonna think about mean electrical axis and how things might proceed down these bundle branches. What if we were to position a lesion in the right bundle now and think about how conduction will, will proceed? It'll proceed down the left bundle branch normally and quickly um, to polarize the left side of the heart. And then we are gonna have sort of cell to cell slower depolarization from left to right 
to depolarize that right side. So the sort of um, the, the, the dominating vector towards the end of that QRS complex is going to be from left to right, the opposite of what it usually is. So if I think in terms of MEA and sort of what's opposite of normal, it's, it's going to be opposite to the left ventricle. So uh, we can look at this in a, in a couple of quick and easy ways. Remembering leads two, three, and AVF down, down at the bottom of, of the um, MEA diagram there. That's where the MEA normally points, roughly in that vicinity, in a normally conducting situation. But if I look at my ECG here, leads two, three, and AVF, the QRS complex is largely negative. Um, the big positive thing at the end, remember, is the T wave. So eliminate that from, from your evaluation. The QRS complex in 2, 3, and AVF is negative. And so that tells me that um, activity is moving away from those um, uh, leads uh, during the, the majority of ventricular depolarization and towards AVR, which is largely positive if I look up at AVR. So looking at my frontal plane diagram, I know depolarization is proceeding away from my left ventricle towards my right ventricle. My mean electrical axis is pointing toward the right. If that's the case, if my MEA is pointing towards the right, that fits with a right bundle branch block. And so I'm gonna use the presence of AV association in the setting of a wide and bizarre um, complex QRS to sort of make my conclusion that bundle branch block could be present. And then I'm gonna use my mean electrical axis to determine, do I think it's a left or a right bundle branch block? Hope that helps and we'll see you next time.